Culinary errors that made history. Since the primordial man accidentally dropped his hunting flesh into the fire, quite a few familiar and beloved foods were unintentionally created. So what really happened in the Tatan sisters' kitchen? And why did the New York cook slice the potatoes so thin? We are going to find out right away. So do not forget to subscribe this channel and comment to this video because we are starting right now. The founding event, which may have become the symbol of the culinary mistakes of all time, took place at the kitchen of the sisters Tatin in the 8080s. The two sisters ran a modest hotel in a small village in south from Paris and cooked meals for their guests in the hotel restaurant. One of them wanted to spoil her guests with apple tart, but forgot to pat the button with dough before placing the apple's sugar and the butter. It was only after the apples had grown so creamy that she discovered the circle of loose dough on the worktop. The experienced cook did not get confused, took the pan out of the oven, put the dough on the apples and put it all in the oven for another baking. The successful result is turned on plate and the rest is history. The first Pepsicle attributed to an 11-year-old gifted entrepreneur from San Francisco named Frank Efferson. In the cold winter of 1905, the boy had left a glass of raspberry juice or perhaps some other soft drink on the porch of his house for the night. The next day he discovered that the glass had been frozen and the drink that had turned to ice had come out of it completely attached to the stick. Nine years later, he made it a patent. There is no basis for this and there is evidence of icebergs like delicacy as early as the 19th century. Even if Efferson maybe was not the first to make ice candies, but he was the first to exploit the invention for industrial and commercial production of the delicacy. And the first iceberg produced and patented by the patent maker of the United States for the Popsicle Company in 1924. The name Popsicle is still a generic name in the United States for sweet icebergs. The name Ruth Wakefield, the owner of a rest house in Massachusetts, was known because of her chocolate cookies. One day, as she stirred the ingredients into cookies, the excellent baker discovered that the cocoa she had used had run out. With great resourcefulness, she broke ordinary chocolate into small pieces and added them to the dough. Wakefield accepted the chocolate to melt during baking and unite with the rest of the ingredients. But the pieces remained, and the result everyone loved, and continue to love to this day. Her cookbook, which came out in 1936, fed a recipe for chocolate chip cookies, and soon became popular in American kitchens. During World War II, American soldiers from Massachusetts who received packets of chocolate chip cookies from their families exchanged them with soldiers from other countries. Soon, the soldier asked their families to prepare these cookies as well, and Wakefield was flooded with requests from all over the world to ask for her recipe. Thus began the worldwide madness about chocolate chip cookies. The crisp fries 
were born in George Kranz Kitchen, an African-American chef at a restaurant in Saragota Springs, New York, on the year 1853. Potato chips were one of the restaurant's most popular dishes, until one customer complained that the slices were too thick. Kranz made thinner slices, fried them, and served it again, but the customer was still not satisfied. When the plate full of rice returned to the kitchen for the third time, the angry chef sliced the potatoes so thin that it was impossible to stick a fork after they had crispy frying. To his surprise, the thrilled customer not only did not get upset, he praised the result and spread the word. Karan's chips were packed in bags, sold through New England and had a great commercial success. In the year 1894, Dr. John Kellogg and his brother, Will Kate, were perhaps the first health promoters forcing patients in the sanitarium to have a severed diet that included abstention from meat, alcohol, tobacco, and caffeine. When they cooked a pot with wheat grains, they were suddenly called to assist in an emergency, and the pot remained on the stove. When it was rediscovered, the grains were moldy, but the brothers decided to use them anyway. They removed the mold and flattened the berries into thin flecks. The flecks were baked in the oven and served for breakfast. The brothers started to experiment with different grains and found that the most successful flecks came from corn. In the light of the successes of the Flex, Will Kate, who was the director of the Convalescent Home, pursued his brother to set up a business for mass production and marketing of the new food. At first, it was called the Baked Conflict Company of Battle Creek. And the company's first product was called Roasted Corn Flex. Despite the success, John Harvey strongly refused to add sugar to the flex, and because of this dispute with his brother, he left the business. When several more factories were set up at Battle Creek, Will Kate changed the name of the company to Kellogg's and added a signature on his packing, which became the company's symbol. One of the competing factories that has become a large producer of cornflakes and has survived till today is Post, which was established by Charles William Post, who was one of the patients at the convalescent home. When Pietro Ferrero, a baker from Piedmont, Italy, in 1946, wanted to make a cake with ganache, he had to use ground hazelnuts instead of chocolate, whose price was very high. A few years later, when he again prepared the successful coating and mixed it with chocolate, the cake remained outside in the Italian weather. The cream melted and obtained a texture of the spread. Ferrero began to market it as a delicacy for spreading on bread. But it was only his son who predicted his full potential and launched it as a global brand called Nutella, only 20 years later, in 1964. So do not forget to subscribe this channel and comment to this video. I want to welcome all the new subscribers and I'm sure you will continue to enjoy Foodie Eyes videos. So thanks for watching, see you on the next.